For 28 years, Pokemon TCG players have just had to accept that one of the game's most popular Pokemon is just, well, most of the time, flat out unusable. Despite what the collectors or popularity contests say, Pokemon's second mascot behind Pikachu has just had to sit in binders, never really seeing any competitive play. Until now, that is, 28 years later. So let's take a look at Charizard's tumultuous journey for the Pokemon TCG and how now, finally, Charizard fans can sit on top of their undisputed best deck in format metagame throw. Let's begin. Ever since the very first Pokemon media was released, one Pokemon that has seemed to be the most popular is Charizard. We only need to look at Basic Shadowless First Edition Charizard's card price to verify this. If we were to look at that base set Charizard card again and analyze its competitiveness, we will quickly see that Charizard just isn't about it. While Fire Spin did deal the highest amount of damage ever seen on a card at the time, it did cost a mind altering 4 Fire Energy to you, and you did have to discard 2 immediately after attacking. To be fair, you could use Charizard's Pokemon Power Energy Burn to efficiently change a double colorless energy into Fire Energy and then discard that after using Fire Spin. A neat little play, but that wasn't base set Charizard's biggest problem. The 1999 meta game was filled with basic Pokemon that hit for high damage, like Hitmonchan, which would spam plus powers and gusting cards to bring poor defenseless Charmander into the active and KO it, before it ever had a chance to evolve up. And as time would go on, more and more attackers would get released that would have no problems KOing Charmander. And it's here where I think Pokemon saw just how popular Charizard was, and they thought, hmm, how about we try and make it an absolutely dominating force in the meta game? But they definitely didn't succeed anytime soon. Since Dark Charizard, which again demands a very high price for collectors, in the competitive game, Dark Charizard wasn't very good. Since Continuous Fireball was functionally very similar to Fire Spin from Base Set Charizard, dealing a high amount of damage, but it did need a ton of energy to use reliably, and even then, you were at the mercy of coin flips, which you never really want to be. Blaine's Charizard was up next, and Pokemon failed massively with this one, making the worst Charizard card yet. Roar and Flame needed you to attach 6 Fire Energy and then discard them all, just to be at the same damage output as base set Charizard. And while Flame Jet dealing 40 damage to a bench Pokemon is... okay, why did it have to be subject to a coin flip? Absolutely abysmal! Next up was Shining Charizard. Now this, to be fair, was a step in the right direction. But it just wasn't executed very well. Shining Charizard was treated as a basic Pokemon, so the whole faff of getting it into play was alleviated. That's nice. And what Hot Flame did do a good amount of damage, this is great. However, it's five energy costs that needed two lightning energy and forced you to discard a fire and a lightning wasn't very nice. You even had the chance to hit yourself for 30 damage just to rub it in. So, let's have a quick recap. So far in the first three years of the Pokemon TCG, Charizard has been rubbish, producing pretty much four bulk cards as far as the competitive game was concerned. But now, we are about to move into the second generation of Pokemon, where they were about to produce their best one yet. Expedition Charizard actually did see some play. This Charizard was strong. Its Poke Power Burning Energy was the same as Energy Burn from before. Except this would turn all energy attached to all your Pokemon into fire energy. You would play this Charizard with Venusaur of all things from the same set. Since its Harvest Bounty Poke Power would let you attach another energy to your Pokemon once per turn. So this means you could get Charizard rolling really quick. And its Scorching Whirlwind attack would do a colossal 120 damage. Which would one shot pretty much everything in the game at the time. And you'd only have to discard 2 energy to use this attack. Most of the time. Which was nice. And thanks to Venusaur, you can just accelerate those energies right back to Charizard next turn. So now, we are looking at the pinnacle of Charizard ever printed at the time. But even then, it was still probably like a tier 3 deck at best. Not the tippy top deck that I know Charizard fans were after. Since, to be fair, getting two different stage 2s into play isn't the easiest thing in the world to do. So we have to keep looking. But like I said before, Charizard did get to the tippy top of the meta game. But it wasn't by these next two cards, that's for sure. This next one is a joke. I'm unsure exactly as to what's going on here. Crystal Charizard, while looking very cool, and had a type-changing gimmick that was pretty interesting, its energy costs were just way too wild to actually get it rolling. EX Dragon Charizard was just... <laughs> pitiful. Honestly, could be the worst one yet. 
Flame pillar for four energy would deal 60 damage. Did they miss off a six or something there? That's even worse than base set, Charizard's fire spin. Now, I guess you could do 30 damage to a bench Pokemon, but quite honestly, who cares at this point? Next up was Charizard EX from the Fire Red and Leaf Green set. And Pokemon thought they were being clever when they printed this one. They thought by making it the first Pokemon to ever deal 200 damage and making it go through all effects, it would have to be good. It would have to dominate the metagame, right? Well, except it needed five energy to attack and you had to discard every single one of them. So that meant this Charizard quickly fell by the wayside as another flashy but unusable card. The next one though, oh boy, this was close to greatness, but something unexpected came out of nowhere to push it out the way. Delta Charizard from Crystal Guardians was actually set up to be very good. Its Peel of Thunder Pokemon power would let you attach energy from the top five cards of your deck when you evolved into it. And its Metal Burn attack would actually deal massive damage too. Things were looking good for Delta Charizard, until the player race quickly realised that if you're going to play this sort of discarding energy to deal more damage kind of a deck, you're probably better off playing Delta, Metagross and Dragonite, since together their pokey powers worked really well, since you would have a constant flow of energy throughout the whole game via Delta Charge, and a stream of cards to draw into via Delta Control, something that Charizard really lacked. And unfortunately for Charizard once again, it fell by the wayside. Next up was Darkstar Charizard. Now, I must confess, this card is stunning. Make no mistakes about it. But we're not after stunning cards here. We need metagame destroyers. Or at least that's what the Charizard fans were after. And again, they fell short. While this card could get played in the Drag Trode deck, which would use Dark Electrode and Dragonite to attach energy and move them around, meaning Charizard did have a niche used to be able to recover special energy from the discard pile like Dark Metal Energy with Rotating Claws, and to be fair, could even take a massive KO with Dark Swirl, if the game allowed it. Well, unfortunately, while it did fit a niche, it wasn't really good enough, and it didn't even see play here. Power Keepers Charizard has to be one of the worst cards ever printed, let alone just Charizard cards. I think it was meant to be good in the 2v2 format, which was briefly supported at the time, since Bursting Inferno says it would uh, burn both defending Pokemon. But since it only dealt 50 damage for 4 energy, this Charizard fell to the depths of irrelevancy. By Secret Wonders, Charizard fans were in shambles. Charizard was in shambles. So they gave this next one a hefty Poker Body Fury Blaze which will boost Charizard's damage by 50 if your opponent had three prize cards or less remaining. Okay, to be fair, this is pretty good. Except Blast Burn cost four energy to deal 120 damage, which is only slightly better than base set Charizard and is the same as the Expedition one all the ways back. And you have to discard two energy or 50% of the time, you'd have to discard all four. So once again, we have another flashy Charizard card that sat in Binders. Charizard G Level X had the power to move all energy to itself to swing with Malevolent Fire, which would KO pretty much everything in the metagame to be fair, pretty good, except 50% of the time you'd have to discard all those energy. And meanwhile, running the risk of sounding like a broken record, discarding energy means you sit in the binder Charizard, you need to do something different. Charizard fans were determined to get a good card though, so Pokemon tried something new with the Charizard from Arceus, and you know what? I would go as far as to say this was the best Charizard card yet. Fire formation would boost damage by 10 for each fire type on your bench. This meant Fire Wing could swing for 80 damage with a single fire energy attachment. This was actually solid. And if you ever got to the point where you could use Burning Tail, this was one-shotting a lot of stuff. And since Burning Tail didn't make you discard energy, this was actually really good. Bear in mind you had broken time space at the time and the old rare candy rules, so you could actually get this Charizard into play turn one very easily, making this a solid deck. This actually had some good finishes at the 2010 state championships. It's just a shame that this existed at the same time as Tail Revenge Gyarados, which was an awful matchup, and SP decks were just trying out tempo you. But all these things considered, this was a solid tier two deck, make no mistake about it, but Charizard fans are greedy. They don't want decent, they wanted complete metagame destruction, and they wouldn't stop until they got it. <laughs> well, they'd have to wait a while for the next Charizard since it came out all the way in boundaries crossed. And well, it sucked. Split Bomb was fun, 
hardly a build around though. And Scorching Fire could take big KOs with Muscle Band or Silver Bangle attached. But with a hefty 5 energy cost, you just couldn't keep up with the speed of the X decks. But I will be very honest here. This Plasma Charizard did look stunning. However, Pokemon were about to hatch their boldest plan yet to get Charizard to the top of the forefront of the meta game. They were about to drop 7 new cards in the same set. Two of which were Mega Evolutions. Pokemon had enough. Both of these Mega Cards did a table shattering 300 damage too. More than enough to blow through the 200 HP cap at the time and have some change too. Mega Charizard Y for 5 energy did 300 damage and then 50 to itself. This was sad though because the 50 self damage would put it into rage of a lot of other attackers like Genesec TX or Black Curum, making a response KO very easy. And those fire energies, even with the help of Blacksmith, weren't really the easiest to accelerate either. Mega Charizard X also did 300 damage with Wild Blaze for 5 energy, except this time you had to weave in a dark energy, and then you would discard the top 5 cards of your deck. This was much more manageable, since even though discarding 5 energy was costly, provided you were taking a 2 prize KO with Wild Blaze, you could actually potentially win games. However, both of these cards were unplayable, strictly bulk in the eyes of the competitive player base. This was because in order to get these Mega Pokemon into play, you had to give up a turn. And this loss of tempo spelled disaster for any Mega Charizard players, making it pretty much impossible to ever set up two Charizards and attack with them in a game. And one Charizard was definitely not enough to win games on its own. There were two different evolving Charizards in Flashfire, one of which was actually pretty good. The other one was trash. Stoke Charizard was banter, since on a coin flip you could attach 3 basic energy from your deck to itself, which to be fair would really help in you getting set up, because either Wild Blaze or Crimson Dive were really energy intensive. But it didn't matter, because then that Charizard would take a massive hit on your opponent's turn, making the Mega Charizard come in on reduced HP, making the sweep impossible. Or, it would just get KO'd at times. The 4th and loaded Charizard EX in Flashfire actually turned out to be the best, since for a double colorless energy attachment and a good use of Blacksmith to accelerate 2 fire energy, you could swing with Combustion Blast in a single turn. With Muscle Band attached, you'd actually do 170 damage, which would KO a ton of meta relevant cards like Thunderous EX, Yvetal EX, and slam the best deck in format at the time Virizion Genesect for weakness. This actually gave Speed Charizard an identity in the format, and it was a decent road deck. It was actually a deck I played myself. Not a meta game destroyer, but a good tier 2 deck at the very best. Then we got a promo Charizard EX, which is by far the worst one yet. Dealing 120 damage for 4 energy. Bear in mind, base set Charizard did 100 damage for 4 energy. Or you could end your turn to search for a Mega Charizard EX and put it in your hand. It wouldn't even evolve it. Oh my goodness. Generations would roll around and we would get a shiny new Mega Charizard EX that we have to look at. Heat Typhoon would deal 100 damage and then you flip a coin for each fire energy attached to the Mega Charizard. You would deal 50 for each heads you flipped. By this time Mega Pokemon were much more prominent in the meta game, so you would need to flip 3 heads realistically to be comfortably one shotting everything in format. And that's just not reliable. And it's that unreliability that made this Mega Charizard EX bulk just like the others. Even though the basic Charizard EX would have been pretty helpful by accelerating a fire energy from the discard pile to itself while also dealing 30 damage. Make sure to check out Dragon Shield, this video sponsor. Use code BURT to get 5% off the best accessories in the game. Funnily enough, the one prize Charizard from the same set generations had more potential. Its one energy attack recall would let you swing for 80 damage since you could copy any one of the previous evolutions attacks as the effect of this attack and Charmeleon had Slash. So if you had Muscle Band attached, you'd actually deal 100 damage for one energy. Combine this with healing cards like Max Potion, and you'd actually have a fun little healing tank deck in your hands. Except the idea of getting a Stage 2 Pokemon out via the Stage 1 in this meta game was just simply laughable, since there was so much item locking format via Seismotoad X and Trevenant, which would stop this deck straight in its tracks before you ever had a chance to use Recall. Sad times. By now, Charizard fans were getting sick of all these Charizard cards that were just flopping. And they were begging Pokemon to try and fix it. By evolutions, they even had a Mega Charizard Spirit Link so you could Mega Evolve without giving up your turn. But that didn't make a damn difference. As we raced towards the Sun and Moon era in the Pokemon TCG, we did get Charizard GX. 
In a similar vein to Crimson Storm, this would deal 300 damage for 5 energy, which at the time was a good number. If you ever had a way to reliably get out of stage 2 Pokemon with 5 energy attached, which spoiler alert, they really wasn't able to do. Although worth noting some discard decks much later on would use Raging Out GX via Mew to a Mew Tag Team to discard 10 cards from your opponent's deck in the expanded format. That's pretty banter. And even though I'm about to break chronological order, let's take a quick look at, at Detective Pikachu Charizard GX because it looks awfully similar to the Burning Shadows one, right? Except it's worse. And the one prize Charizard from Detective Pikachu definitely wasn't any better. And Dragon's Majesty Charizard did have a promising ability to be fair, boosting Charizard damage by 30 for each EX or GX that your opponent had in play, reminding me of the Arceus Charizard all the way back when, but it just wasn't good enough to deal any metagame damage. Although I do think Pokemon were learning, since they seem to cotton on that one prize Charizard had to have a funky ability to be good, and that's exactly what the team up Charizard had. Roaring Resolve would deal 20 damage to the Charizard, but in return you'd be able to attach 2 Fire Energy from your deck to itself. This works perfectly with its attack continuous Blaze Ball, which would deal 50 for each Fire Energy you discarded from it. This was actually a good multiplier, and with turn attachments you could actually KO anything. But again, the age old question of getting multiple stage 2s out just cursed this Charizard from the start. Since at the time we had 300 HP basic tag team Pokemon like Pikaram that were just knocking on the door. That just made this deck not feasible. Forcing this Charizard again back down to the bottom tables. By this time though, I do think Pokemon knew what they had to do. They realised that releasing a stage 2 Charizard is just not gonna work in this meta game. But since Charizard is an evolved Pokemon, they really can't do anything about that though, right? Well, in steps Charizard and Rishiram Tag Team GX. This was the real deal. A basic Pokemon with 270 HP, an outrage attack that would deal massive damage for 2 energy, making it very efficient. A 230 damage Flare Strike that was very easy to power up via Welder, which would let you attach 2 Fire Energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon and then draw 3 cards afterwards. And the best bit was, a free energy GX attack that would deal 200 damage, meaning you could pick up a turn 1 KO on basic GX Pokemon, catapulting you into the lead. Or, if you really needed to, you could attach another free energy, which wasn't too hard because you had Welder by the way, and this would then deal 300 damage and go through all effects on your opponent's active Pokemon too. This left Charizard Tag Team in extremely good metagame contention because there was a whole host of fire cards like Fire Crystal to get back fire energy, Giant Ha to search for out fire energy, Ninetales to gust up Pokemon by discarding fire energy, and even Victini Prism that would shuffle those fire energy back and take a big KO at the same time. This left Charizard Tag Team a solid deck, arguably the best deck in format, leading to a signature top four finish at 2019 Worlds via Tour de Reckler. There was even a Greens version of the deck, that four went all abilities to make use of Greed's Exploration and Volcanion, which is pretty good too. But Charizard fans still weren't happy, since there were other decks like Mewtwo and Pikachu that were arguably better, and Charizard fans wanted Charizard to be the undisputed best deck in format, and they wouldn't stop until they had it. Next up was Hidden Fate's Charizard GX, and for all intents and purposes, this was meant to be bulk, but it did take one of Reshizard's arch nemesis Mewtwo tag team to a whole new level since Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team could just put it in the discard pile very easily, and then you would have access to the best GX attack in the game, since Flare Blitz would do 300 damage for 4 energy, no drawback. Perfect in that deck, but useless everywhere else. Next up we have another Charizard Tag Team, but instead of Reshiram, this one was paired with Brakeson. Brilliant Flare would deal 180 damage and let you search your deck for 3 cards and put them in your hand. This was actually pretty damn good. Not good enough to be its own standalone deck, but good enough to warrant at least one slot in the green Zard deck as a one-off and maybe creeping into some ability Zard base decks too. Next up we're in the Sword and Shield era of the Pokemon TCG and it only took us three sets to get a new Charizard, yay! This one was reminiscent of the older, do massive damage for massive energy archetype since Charizard VMAX did 300 damage for 5 energy, stop me if you've heard that one. Although 300 this time didn't even one shot all VMAX Pokemon. So of all the deal massive damage Charizards, this arguably was one of the worst ones. Except there was a saviour for Charizard V Max a few years later on in Arceus V-Star. Since Arceus V-Star would accelerate 3 fire energy to Charizard, 
and this opened up the door for you to use DTE to provide the last two colourless costs. And since at this time 280 was the magic number to KO V-Stars, this meant G-Max Wildfire was mighty fine at dealing massive damage. This however wasn't really a meta deck, at the very best it was a cheeky little rogue, but it did see very limited success. Next up we have Vivid Voltage Charizard and this one had a very strong ability, Battle Sense. That would let you look at the top 3 cards of your deck, you got to keep one and discard the rest. This had obvious synergy with its attack Royal Blaze, which would deal 100 damage plus 50 for each Leon in your discard pile. Meaning you could actually hit the massive 330 number by having 3 in the discard and then playing your 4th one as a supporter for the turn, very nice. This was almost always a dreamer scenario though which never really came off, but it did make for a fun rogue at the very least. So then we actually had this special delivery Charizard card which, you know, is kind of fun and, you know, cost a lot of money, but was it good? Well, definitely not. Lance's Charizard was a very fun card, looked very good, but doing 200 damage for 3 energy just wasn't going to cut it in the standard form. Next up we had Charizard V-Star, and while I won the risk of sounding like a broken record again, it was a fun idea that didn't result in much. Starblaze was good, dealing 320 damage, great number for carrying all VMAX Pokemon if you had a damage modifier to get you to that 330 mark, but Explosive Fire dealing 230 was just a little bit too low to be used as a builder. Now Pokemon Go introduced two Charizard cards, one of which in my opinion was the best Charizard card to date, and the other one was this Burn Brightly Charizard, which would make all Fire Energy in play count for two Fire Energy instead. A fun card, but it didn't really do anything worth noting. Radiant Charizard, however, was, and still is, an absolute menace. A basic 160 HP Pokemon that could swing for 250 damage for as low as a single Fire Energy attachment. Because even though Combustion Blast does cost 5 energy, its ability Excited Heart would reduce that energy cost by 1 for each prize card your opponent has taken. Absolutely incredible. This saw play as soon as it was legal at the 2022 World Championships in London where Ross Corform popularised it paired with Inteleon to give you incredible consistency and energy acceleration via Twin Energy, Raihan and Magma Basin. And after that it was played in the Lost Box archetype paired with Sableye to make a very scary one prize attacking deck that was quite honestly tier 1 at the very best. And then once Silver Tempest came out, we saw Radiant Charizard planted firmly in the best deck in format Lugia V Star. Since Lugia would get two Archeops into play, and those Archeops would accelerate four special energy a turn from the deck, meaning you could attack with Combustion Blast at any point in the game, which made Radiant Charizard terrifying. But as good as Radiant Charizard was, it wasn't really a metagame dominator. It was at best a tech attacker in a lot of matchups. Never really a build around. And then 151 rolled around a special set, a throwback to Gen 1, and we got this big shiny Charizard EX, which did a very high amount of damage, 330, and did have a little one energy attack as well, never a bad thing to have. But, you know, fire energy wasn't the easiest to accelerate at the time, and since it was an EX, you couldn't use Arceus V-Star for it. So, unfortunately, once again, Charizard hit the binder. But then... After 28 years, it finally happened. Instex Charizard EX. This card really does it all. Infernal Rain attaches 3 Fire Energy from the deck when you evolve into it, meaning streaming multiple Charizards throughout the game really wouldn't be a problem. And then an absolutely mental attack Burning Darkness, which would deal 180 damage plus 30 for each prize card your opponent has taken. Monumental attack that would two shot everything at the start of the game while dishing out ungodly damage in the late game. All backed up with a colossal 330 HP too. And the best part was, Charizard EX was a terror dark type, so it hit the best decks at the time for weakness, like Mew V Max and Gardevoir GX. This quite honestly put Charizard EX in the league of its own, with it at time of writing, winning the last three TPCI regional level or higher events, including EUIC, the biggest event of all time as of recording. So after 28 years, Charizard fans can rest. Their journey is done. They now have their world beater Charizard card and I don't think it's going anywhere any time soon. If you like that video, why don't you watch this video here where I give you a rundown on the 28 
Year Pokemon TCG Metagame.